Welcome back to 20 Minutes or Less. This is our first story of the day. I'm Elliot Morgan. I'm Joe Beretta. And here we go. So, you may have heard that the ice caps are melting, which is totally exciting for everybody, except, you know, people who like ice caps or polar bears or I don't know the longevity of our planet. But in addition to our ice caps screwing us all over in a long, slow spiral toward oblivion, it looks like it could also lead to a new kind of war, the kind that happens in the Arctic. Because as those ice caps melt, a plethora of resources is slowly becoming available. And right now, the Arctic is a flutter with military activity, which should only increase over time. Over the next coming years, as time passes and the ice caps continue to melt, concern over security and who the Arctic regions actually belongs to will become a hotly contested issue. As more people hop on over to the North Pole for gas and oil reserves, the risk of needing police or even military forces increases. And if you're wondering what the big deal is, 13% of the world's undiscovered oil and 30% of the planet's natural gas is believed to be under that ice. That's not to mention the fact that shipping lanes could be opened up by 2030, which would mean huge things for commerce. One third of Russia is in the Arctic Circle, and they've been the most aggressive at establishing themselves up in the north. Even France has showed interest. Other countries have resumed military exercises up there for the first time since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And if you're thinking, oh yeah, this is America, we're gonna blow them away, claim that icy tundra is our own winter wonderland, then think again. Walter Burbrick, a war college professor, states, the findings indicate that the Navy is entering a new realm in the Arctic. Instead of other nations relying on the U.S. Navy for capabilities and resources, sustained operations in the Arctic region will require the Navy to rely on other nations for capabilities and resources. Uh-oh. So basically the U.S. Navy wouldn't be able to handle large-scale missions up in the Arctic because they lack boats that can operate in or around Arctic ice. Good foresight, Navy. Yeah, maybe next time you can include can operate in cold water on your list of military boat requirements. Yeah. So the good thing here is that we have the best nuclear submarine fleet in the world. The bad news is we don't have any icebreakers, and if you're not familiar with what an icebreaker is, basically comes in real handy whenever you need to break ice. The only icebreaker the U.S. has belongs to the Coast Guard, and they can't be like, hey, Coast Guard, can I borrow your icebreaker? So discussions are in place right now on whether or not the U.S. Navy will build more icebreakers. But an impending battle over the rights to that huge chunk of ice isn't really the immediate threat. As it stands right now, there is neither enough of a military or a commercial presence in the Arctic for there to be any real risk. For now, all the countries are getting along all happy-go-lucky. The real threat here is a disaster. Right now, there's an economic boom that's slowly happening in the Arctic, and with that influx of private and government efforts, the risk of a disaster increases. So it seems that militaries might actually have to save some of their own people before going into any sort of a conflict. It's really going to be an interesting time because it's been a long while since there's been land that we all want to discover and go take and fight over. Like, Manifest Destiny has been dead for a long time, so what's going to happen in the next couple years? It used to be that whenever you thought of something like the North Pole, besides thinking of Santa Claus, you thought of a lifeless, barren wasteland. But with all the stuff directly under the ice, it might, uh, might change the situation a little bit. Might be worth uh, fighting over. Maybe. Or not. So what are your thoughts on these developments? Do you think this is going to usher in a new era of pioneering, or should we maybe focus Focus on alternative energy so we don't end up going to war over a block of ice. Leave a comment down below. Click the like, then click the subscribe, then click the annotation, and go to sourcefed.com to see the five stories a day or see anything that we've ever done before. I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Elliot Morgan. <sighs>